The best way to learn Python or any coding language is to start by understanding what it can do overall. Once you get the big picture, break it down into a smaller part and get to know each piece a bit. Then put them back together and look at the big picture again. Doing this help you understand better. You will start to feel uh, more confident and ready to learn more about each part. Once you have a good understanding, you can explore uh, each part more deeply, knowing why it's important and how to use it. So, if you're looking for the fastest way to learn Python, stick around till the end of this video. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Farhad Ali Karami and we are going to unboxing Python to make its big picture. When you begin learning Python and unboxing it, you come across uh, these basic parts. Variables, different types of data, collections, conditions, loops, functions, classes, objects, and modules. Think of each part as a puzzle piece. When you put them together, they form something important and useful. For more clarity, we'll introduce a creative metaphor to help you visualize the fundamental components of Python. Imagine Python programming as uh, solving a complex puzzle. Each piece of the puzzle represents a, uh, a crucial building block of the language. As you fit them together, you uncover the full picture of what Python can do. Just like a puzzle, Python programming involves uh, assembling various pieces. It's serving a unique purpose. From variables to functions, classes to modules. These components work together uh, to create uh, powerful and dynamic applications. Throughout this video, my friend, we'll explore each puzzle piece, uh, giving you a clear understanding of its role and how it contribute to the overall structure of Python code. So, let's embark on this puzzle-solving journey together and uncover the beauty and functionality of Python programming. But, before we start exploring Python and its part, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. This way, you'll get updates on our future tech talks and coding adventures. Ready? Let's get started. Variables and Data Types The first piece of the Python puzzle is variables. In Python, variables act as containers for storing data allowing us to manipulate information within our programs. So, it's essential to understand data types, right? Now, let's briefly discuss the basic data types and their use cases. Understanding these basic data types is essential uh, because they form the foundation of Python programming. They provide us uh, with the versatility to represent various types of data and solve a wide range of problems. Let's continue exploring the puzzle of Python and unlock its full potential together. Integer Integers are used for whole numbers without decimal points. For example, age equals 25. Their use cases include uh, counting, indexing, and representing quantities. Floats Floats are used for numbers with decimal points. For example, uh, price equals 19.99. Their use cases, my friend, include a uh, calculation involving uh, fractional values, representing measurement and other similar scenarios. Strings. A string is used uh, for text data, enclosed in quotation marks. Uh, for example, name equals John. A strings use cases are storing names, addresses, messages, and other textual information. Okay, well, one important thing that I should mention, my friends, is that Python data types are not limited to these three types. In fact, there are other data types available, but to keep this discussion concise, I won't be delving into them. Remember, 
The purpose of this video is to become familiar with Python components uh, to form our big picture rather than focusing on their details, okay? Now that we have gained a brief familiarity with Python data types, let's introduce another essential component, which is collection types. These tools like lists, tuples, and dictionaries are super helpful for organizing and working with data. Lists are like dynamic containers uh, where you can put lots of stuff and easily add, remove, or sort things. Tuples, on the other hand, are like lists, uh, but once you put stuff in, you can change them, okay? Then, there are dictionaries, which are like special lists uh, where each item has its own name. You can quickly find and change things using these names, okay? With these tools, my friends, developers can manage data more efficiently. Okay, let's explore collection types uh, briefly. Let's start with lists. Lists are uh, ordered collections of elements, allowing for easy modification. They are commonly used to storing sequences of data, uh, such as numbers or names, like this. Tuples Tuples are immutable ordered collections of elements, often used for fixed sequences of data. They are commonly used for representing coordinates, uh, database records, or function return values, like this. Dictionaries. Dictionaries are an ordered collection where each element is a key value pair, enabling quick data retrieval. They are commonly used for mapping relationships uh, between items and storing structured data like user profile, configuration settings, uh, product details, addresses, or employee information, like this. As you can see in this example, name is a key, John is a value, age is a key, 13 is a value, city is a key, and New York is a value. Okay, well, these collection types empowers you to handle uh, diverse data structures efficiently in Python. The next piece of the Python puzzle are conditions and loops. In Python, conditions and loops are powerful control structures that shape the flow of a uh, program, allowing developers to make decisions and iterate over data efficiently. Let's start with conditions. Conditions, often implemented using uh, if statements, allow you to execute certain code blocks uh, based on whether a specified condition is true or false. Here, you can see some of their common use cases which are implementing decision-making logic and uh, uh, handling user input validation. Loops Loops such as uh, for and while loops enable you to execute a block of code repeatedly. And here you can see some of their common use cases, which are iterating over collections of data and uh, automating repetitive tasks. By mastering conditions and loops, you gain the ability to control the flow of your Python programs and solve a wide range of computational problems with elegance and efficiency. Functions Another piece of Python puzzle is functions. In Python, functions are powerful tools that allow you to encapsulate reusable block of code. They enable you to break down your program into smaller, more manageable parts, uh, make it easier to understand, maintain, and debug, okay? Functions are named blocks of code that perform a specific tasks. They can take inputs, called parameters, and produce outputs, known as return values. 
My friends, by defining functions, you can avoid repetitive code and promote code reusability, leading to more efficient and modular programs. Here are some common use cases for functions, uh, which include promoting code reusability and enhancing code organization. Functions play a crucial role in structuring uh, Python programs, promoting code organization, uh, readability, and maintainability. Classes and objects. Okay, we are reaching to the fifth puzzle piece, uh, which is classes and objects. My friends, in Python, Classes and objects are fundamental concepts in object-oriented programming, uh, uh, or OOP. They allow you to model real-world entities and organize code into reusable and modular components. Classes Classes are blueprints for creating objects. They define the structure and behavior of objects. They encapsulate data or attributes, let's say, and functionality or methods related to a specific entity. Their use case is to modeling real-world entities such as cars, uh, animals, or employees. Here you can see an example of creating a class in Python. Objects. Objects are instances of classes. They represent specific instances or occurrences of the class. You can create multiple objects or instances from a single class. Their use case, my friends, is to instantiate multiple objects uh, to represent distinct entity and perform specific actions, like this. As you can see in this example, we instantiate two different cars. I mean car 1 and car 2. From car class and the subsequent invocation of the drive method uh, on each instance. Okay? Understanding classes and objects is crucial for building modular, maintainable, and scalable Python applications. Modules In Python, Modules are powerful tools for organizing code into reusable and shareable components. Modules are files containing Python code, such as uh, functions, classes, and variables. They provide a way to organize related code into separate files, promoting code reusability and collaboration. Let's briefly look at their use cases. Promote code reusability. Modules allow you to reuse code across multiple projects, reducing redundancy and improve productivity. Enhance code organization. My friends, by organizing related code uh, into separate modules, you can improve code structure and maintainability. Facilitate collaboration. Modules enable multiple developers to work on a different parts of a project simultaneously, promoting uh, teamwork and code sharing. For clarity, let me give you an example. Suppose you have a Python project that requires functionality for handling mathematical operations. You can create a module named uh, math underscore operations dot pi uh, containing functions for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Then, you can import this module into your main program and use its function wherever needed. Like this. Modules streamline code organization, uh, promote code reuse, and simplify development process in Python. Okay, well, throughout this journey, my friends, we have explored various fundamental components of Python programming, each serving a piece of the puzzle in mastering the language. Let's recap. Variables and data types. 
We learned how variables store uh, data and the different uh, data types available in Python, such as integers, floods, and uh, strings. Collection types. We delved into collection types like lists, tuples, and dictionaries, which allow us to organize and manipulate data efficiency. Conditions and loops. We explored how conditions like if statements and loops, uh, for and while loops, control the flow of our programs, enabling decision making and iteration. Functions. We discovered how functions encapsulate reusable blocks of code, promoting modularity and code reusability. Classes and objects. We uncovered the principles of object-oriented programming, OOP, uh, through classes and objects, enabling us to model real-world uh, entities and organize code effectively. Modules. We discussed how modules provide a way to organize the code into reusable and shareable components, promoting code reusability and collaboration among developers. By understanding these fundamental puzzle pieces, you have acquired a solid foundation for Python programming. Each component is interconnected, working together uh, to build a robust and efficient Python applications. Now, armed with this knowledge, you are ready to tackle more complex programming challenges. Build sophisticated applications and embark on your Python programming journey with confidence. Remember, learning Python is not just about mastering syntax. It's about understanding how to leverage these fundamental concepts to solve real-world problems creatively. Keep exploring, keep practicing, and keep pushing the boundaries of your Python proficiency. The possibilities are endless. As you continue your Python learning journey, I encourage you to explore each puzzle piece in more detail, dive deeper into uh, advanced topics, and embark on projects that challenge uh, and inspire you. Remember, learning Python is a journey, my friends not a destination. Embrace the process, stay curious, and don't hesitate to experiment and make mistakes along the way. Every obstacle you overcome and every problem you solve brings you one step closer to becoming a proficient uh, Python programmer. Okay? So, keep coding, keep exploring, and keep pushing the boundaries of your Python proficiency. The world of programming awaits, filled with endless opportunities and exciting uh, possibilities. Thank you for joining us on this Python unboxing journey today. Remember, your learning adventure continues beyond this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to stay informed about our upcoming tech explorations. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more tech talks and coding adventures, and ring the notification bell to stay updated. If delving into the fastest way to learn Python sparked your curiosity, you won't want to miss the valuable insight waiting for you in our earlier videos.